Oh boy, I clicked on a video with Harley in the thumbnail, so it's either gonna be Yam gearing up to take a big old dump on HD, or Spite trying to tell me that Harley's just misunderstood and needs our support to get back on their feet. Well, as you can probably tell by this smooth baritone, it's Spite, and while I freely admit to being a Harley simp, I do have some legitimate grievances with the motor company, but that's not what we're here to discuss today. Rather, we're gonna discuss one motorcycle, or line of motorcycles, the Sportster, perhaps the most easily recognizable Harley Davidson ever produced. The bike is often maligned by both Harley diehards and the motorcycle riding public as slow or too expensive or made out of Stone Age materials, but the Sportster plays an important role in the Harley Davidson lineup. The crazy thing is that we might be watching the last few years of the Sportster as emissions regulations and tastes move away from big, lopy, air-cooled engines toward quieter, more economical bikes with less impact on the planet and the eardrums of those people within a quarter mile of your bike. Harley Davidson is in trouble. There's no two ways about it. Their core customer base is aging out of the motorcycles, and they can't convince people to buy their current lineup. And the world seems to be shouting unanimously, no thank you, to bikes like the Pan America while holding their breath waiting for the Bronx to fail. Oh, it's gonna be a $15,000 bike that barely makes enough power to compete with the Speed Triple, I hear Harley haters shout. And then the Harley boys retort with, yeah, but I got me a 114 that makes more torques than a Busa, to which the haters say, a Rebel 500 will smoke your Harley, let alone a Busa. And on and on, back and forth it rages, while one motorcycle sits quietly in the corner just hoping it can go out for a ride sometime today. The Sportster. It used to come in a wide variety of flavors, but now you can only buy four. The Iron 883, the Iron 1200, the 48, and the Roadster. All of these bikes seem to have to constantly justify their existence to the world, so today I'm going to prove to you that not only are Sportsters real Harleys, but but they're a damn sight more authentic than something like the Streetline, the Fat Bob, and the Triglide that all these condescending boomers are now riding around on. Before we get too far into this one though, I need to take a second and shout out our sponsor for today, Ridge Wallets. You guys have heard me talk a lot about them recently, and there's a good reason. Do me a favor, reach into your pocket and grab your wallet. Now take a good long look at it. Is that the wallet of an adult human? Or does it look like the wallet a child carries his $5 a week allowance in? Can you imagine? Imagine the stifled giggles of a sales guy when you go to pay for your bike and pull that wretched hunk of junk out. Get a Ridge, my dude. They're basically indestructible, come in all kinds of colors and materials, and they have RFID blocking tech to keep your cards safe. Yam and I carry ours all the time, and if you click the link down below, you can get one too. Use the code YAMMYNOOB for 10% off and free shipping. Now back to the Sportster. The very first Sportsters rolled off the factory floor in 1952. The Model K featured an air-cooled 45-degree engine, which was a side valve design made into a four-speed transmission. Horsepower and torque specs aren't really reliable for a bike this old, but I can assume that it made something like 30 to 40 horsepower and 42 to 46 foot-pounds of torque, and weighed in around 490 pounds. Man, having to go back like 70 years to find a Harley under 500 pounds is a little disappointing, I have to say. But the first real Sportster was released in 1957. That was the first Sportster to use the iron head engine, which was another 45-degree air-cooled power plant, but this time it featured overhead cams. It also featured a compression ratio of 7.5 to 1, making 42 horsepower and 48 foot-pounds. This was coincidentally the first 883 engine, more on that in a little bit. The bike weighed in at 495 pounds wet and was driven by an old-school plane chain. It had the same 4-speed gearbox, but the Model K was the first civilian motorcycle that Harley built with hydraulic shocks for both wheels. Before then, it was either hard mount or springs. And seriously, Harley boys, please tell me, what is the point of having a hardtail or a springer now, or am I just not man enough to understand? Now, the Sporty went along with a few changes here and there throughout the years, with higher compression models being made available, new touring models, and electric start in 1967. But the most significant change came in 1986 when the Evolution engine was introduced. If you've heard Harley boys talk about their bikes, you might have heard them say stuff like Evo, or Milwaukee 8, or Twin Cam. All of these these are nicknames to refer to the various engines and denote the era in which they were made. For example, if you hear the name Knucklehead, you know that the engine was made between 1936 and 1947. This is the kind of code speak that you become more fluent in as you spend more time around real bikers, trademark. 
But anyway, the Evo was a real shot in the arm for the Sportster line, bumping the max engine size from 1,000 to 1,100 and later 1,200 cc's. There's a bazillion Evo motors out there in a lot of different configurations, but at the time, the 1200s made 50.4 horsepower and 62 foot-pounds of torque at a more modern 9 to 1 compression ratio. They were getting close to breaking that 500 pound mark at 498 pounds, but they did feature 39 millimeter forks and dual preload adjustable shocks in the rear. Another positive for these sporties was their use of disc brakes over drums, which were more common in cruisers at the time, and you still see them today on some cheaper metric cruisers. The inclusion of a fifth gear in 1991 and belt drives in 1993 made these bikes much more livable with modern highway speeds, but they still retain that air-cooled potato, potato, potato quality that has become synonymous with Harley-Davidson. There were almost yearly changes to the Sportster from 1993 to 2014, but the biggest was the switch to EFI in 2007. Now modern Sportsters feature ABS, keyless ignition, higher compression ratios, and catalytic converters to keep up with the times, but when you look at a Sportster now at a dealership, you can see all the bikes that they used to be. Unlike the rest of the modern classic crowd, Sportsters never had to reinvent themselves. They never ceased production only to be brought back to capitalize on hipsters, they've always been there. As Shade Tree Surgeon, who's awesome by the way, I've been binging a lot of his content lately and you should definitely go check him out, but as he says, Sportsters are like heirloom motorcycles. You could buy one today and own it forever and pass it down to your kids. When you hear people say they don't make them like they used to anymore, well, they definitely do with the Sportster. Okay, Spite, you've written a long two-page love letter to the Sportster, but you haven't answered the question, is it a real Harley yet? And you're right, but here's the thing. The answer to that question is really simple. Yes, a Sportster is a real Harley, and if people give you a bunch of grief because you ride a Sportster, they just don't get it. But since you've stuck with me all this way, let me explain why the Sportster is a real Harley. When you think of Harleys, what do you think of? If you're like me, you probably think of a big, heavy, black motorcycle that sounds something like this. It's also probably customized to no end with different bars, different seat, and maybe even Olin's because some Sportster guys really want to spend top dollar to make their cruisers handle like a 20-year-old sport bike. Harley keeps pushing this rugged, individualistic ideal, so it makes sense that every Sportster turns into their rider's idea of what a Sportster should be. Do you want to go out for long hauls on your Sportster? Well, slap a windscreen, some forward controls, and a nice comfy seat on there and hit the road. How about turning it into a canyon carver? Get yourself some taller shots swap the brake pads and lower your bars for a bike that can hang with just about any other bike out there. But maybe you want to crush some single track on your Harley because you're an absolute mad lad with testicles the size of grapefruits. Well, a set of knobbies, taller front forks, and a skid plate will get you most of the way there. There's almost nothing a Sportster can't do. All it takes is time, effort, and know-how to select the right mods for the job. This is the core of that Harley spirit, and you're never going to see a Dyna in the dirt or a street glide at the track. But if you look hard enough, you might find a Sportster there. Because these bikes have been in continuous production since the 50s, the aftermarket is literally infinite. If you can dream it up, you can probably build a Sportster to do it. But what about all those fat bearded Harley boys who dump all over the Sportster because it's a girl's bike? Well, they do have a point there, but they're making it in kind of a stupid and pejorative way. Sure, the Milwaukee 8 is a great engine and it makes buttloads of torque, but the M8 was introduced in 2017 as a way to meet emissions and noise standards. Sure, it makes a bit more power and has liquid cooling and all the other modern goodies, but take a look at this chart that shows the running times of some of these engines. The Evo motor is the only one that goes back to before all these environmental regulations forced Harley to change. The Evo is even older than that twin cam engine, which is probably the one that those boomers are riding around on. Also, Sportster sales have kept these big twins afloat because you're not going to sell a bunch of 800-pound barges in places like like Europe and Asia. So if you ask me, the Sportster's a hell of a lot more authentic than a modern soft tail. But heritage alone might not be enough to shut one of these insufferable HD gatekeepers up. So maybe you need to show them that you mean business by smoking that 114 he's got down the highway. Well, thanks to that aftermarket I alluded to, you can make up to 130 horsepower and 90 foot-pounds of torque, and that's edging in on muscle bike territory. Admittedly, it will take a lot of work, but your Sportster's more than willing to do it. So now that I've shown you that the Sportster's not only a real Harley, but the only real Harley that's being made today, 
Which bike should you get? Well, you've got some choices. If you're willing to put up with carburetors, you can basically get any Sportster since 1987 and it'll make you happy. Hell, you could even go back to 1952 if you're willing to work on the bike a lot and you're good with wrenches. They're just as flexible as the late model Sportsters, and there's a lot of cachet in saying that you have an old school Harley. But if you're like me and you want fuel injection, you're going to want to go 2007 or newer. If you look into that market, you can get a Nightster, which is the bike that launched the Dark Customs line and the whole blacked out bobber look that Triumph and the Big Four copied. You could get the 883R, which is a higher compression version of the 883, and a for those who are looking to make big power. You could even get an XR1200, which is hands down the best Sportster ever made. But let's say you want to go full bananas and drop $12,000 on a new Sportster. Which one should you get? Well, the Roadster is a modern version of the XR1200 with inverted forks, dual discs, and increased ground clearance. Admittedly, it's not as fast or as flickable as the XR1200, but it's the sportiest Sportster you can buy from the factory today. If you're feeling like an in-town cruiser, the 48 has you covered. But if you really want to buy a Sportster and make it your own, the best bike might surprise you. I'd say you need to get an Iron 883. Yes, objectively it is a slow motorcycle. And yes, objectively there are better cruisers out there. But if you're thinking about some grand Sportster build like swapping heads or turning it into a scrambler, you need to start with a blank canvas. The Iron 883 is perhaps the best starting point for prospective Sportster owners because it has no mods. But it does have all the look and feel of the 1200s while also costing $3,000 less. You're getting an air-cooled, rubber-mounted, push rod, oil puking, slow-moving, slow-stopping bike, but it's ready for you to make it your own. But if you do want one, you need to go get one now. I'm worried that without any significant changes since 2014 and tightening emissions regulations, Harley might end up discontinuing these bikes. It's a shame, but I'm willing to bet that in the next five years, you won't be able to buy an Evo Sportster anymore. And once these bikes die, there isn't really going to be a real Harley out there anymore. Now, how you doing, partner? This video's over, but you click on this one right over here, you keep watching yourself some yammy new. Maybe I bend my boots on this one, maybe I give you some other funny memes or something like that. You might not know if you watch the video, so watch the video now, all right?